Today's announcement has nothing to do with the president, has nothing to do with the president's campaign or campaign activity. It has nothing to do with the activities of the campaign. It has to do with his failure to tell the truth. That doesn't have anything to do with the campaign or the campaign's activities. What leads you to believe that this will conclude to the Mueller investigation? Have you been giving, given a heads up? What? Uh, those are the indications that we have at this time. I can't go, any, for, I can't go any further than that. Indications from who and where? Is Sarah, yeah. indications from where? I, as I just said, I can't go any further. Yeah. We still expect this to conclude soon. I still attend that we believe that it will be concluded soon. It is called the nothing to see here defense. And if you only watch the White House briefing every day, you indeed might think there is nothing to see here. Sarah Huckabee Sanders today trying to make two things clear. There's no connection between the Trump campaign and Russia, and Robert Mueller's investigation is inconsequential. The Washington Post is reporting today, however, this, quote, with a guilty plea and a 31-page indictment, special counsel Robert Mueller spoke volumes more than months of heated public debate about the Russia probe. Without saying a word, Mueller's message was clear. According to veteran lawyers, he isn't bluffing and witnesses are talking. Here with us just happen to be two veteran lawyers. Peter Zeidenberg, a former federal prosecutor and deputy special counsel in the Scooter Libby case, low so many years ago during the Bush 43 administration. And Saul Weisenberg, deputy independent counsel for the Whitewater Lewinsky investigation, also so many years ago, he conducted grand jury questioning of President Bill Clinton. I say that because I was around for both of them and reported on them at the time. Uh, Saul, can you go first and tell us what you learned today about the Mueller investigation? Well, that it's uh, what we always suspected, that it's very serious, that it's here to stay, uh, that it's ruthlessly efficient and doing really substantive work. That Manafort indictment, uh, even though uh, the press secretary is correct, it didn't mention the president at all, it's a very substantial alleged crime. It's the kind of indictment that any U.S. attorney's office in any district in the country would make a very big deal of. There'd be a press conference from the U.S. attorney, and that would be true irrespective of who the defendant was. This is a very serious indictment with very substantial allegations. Peter, same question to you, and what does it mean that Papadopoulos was nowhere on anybody's radar when we left work on Friday night? Well, what it says is the special counsel has been working uh, appropriately uh, under the radar. And it's both uh, the ethical way to do his job without leaking, but it's also extremely effective in that not for, for the other defense counsel, for other witnesses, not knowing what's going on uh, makes it much easier for the prosecutor to make his case. Um, Papadopoulos being under the radar means that the investigators were able to go out and question uh, persons one, two, and three, the senior campaign advisors that were identified in the uh, plea agreement, and they were completely unaware that there's already an accounting in the record uh, under oath from, uh, from this guy, George Papadopoulos. So, Saul, the feds walk into Dulles Airport at the height of summer in July. Somehow, quietly, they grab an adult male and get out of there. Nobody knows nothing. He goes back to his work and life, we are to presume. Today, he is called a proactive uh, cooperator. Does that mean, as has been speculated all day, that he was wearing a wire? It's certainly possible that he was wearing a wire. And Peter makes a very good point about the other individuals who would have been questioned not knowing that Papadopoulos was cooperating, but also he could have very easily called them and done consensual monitoring, wouldn't even need a court order for that. Keep in mind, he's arrested in July. The plea is not uh, signed. Uh, finally signed and filed under seal until October the 5th. That's plenty of time to do uh, undercover work for them. And by the way, the actual plea itself and the information is very, very simple. It wouldn't have taken long 
to, to finalize that. Uh, it's a simple one count information to a, a false statement, very simple plea agreement. Uh, Peter, there's something in your line of work called a superseding indictment where basically it's an add-on, it's a bolt-on with more charges. How are they coming after Manafort? Do they say to him, look, this was just to get you in here, to get you in the criminal justice uh, system. We have this many things we're looking at. How would you like to make our job easier? Because if you get nicked on some of these charges, you're going to die in prison. Well, it's entirely possible, but I don't personally think it's likely. Uh, th the indictment that has already been brought um, doesn't need any extra weight in terms of a, a inducement to plead guilty and cooperate. It's extremely detailed, and it, the, the amount of money involved is what drives the sentence under the sentencing guidelines. So he is looking at many years, if not decades, in prison. And, and frankly, in looking at that indictment, I don't think it's defensible. I think most defense attorneys would look at that indictment if they had a client come in and say, we're going to have to make a deal. You can't try this case. So and is, is a superseding indictment possible? Yeah, it's possible, but I don't think it's necessary uh, in order to flip Paul Manafort. Wow, that focuses the mind. And, and Saul, how are, how are Flynn's lawyers looking at what happened today? Well, uh, there's nothing directly related to, to Flynn, but again, it's consistent with the way Mueller has always operated and the way Andrew Weissman has always operated. These are very serious people who are extremely aggressive. So I would say they're going to be very worried if they weren't already worried. I, I think it is worth mentioning that there is absolutely nothing in the Manafort indictment about Trump or the administration and that even in the Papadopoulos uh, criminal information, even though the press secretary is wrong, it clearly talks about the Trump campaign and campaign officials. Uh, there's nothing whatsoever implicating the president himself. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.